The popular image of the Vikings is one of terrifying warriors wearing horned helmets. Although we are familiar with these depictions of the Vikings, but a helmet found in the Norwegian warriors burial at Germanbo, north of Oslo in 1943, tells another story. It is a 10th century artifact, has a rounded iron cap, a guard around the eyes and nose, and no horns. Archaeologists have not found any concrete evidence that Vikings wore horned helmets. However, there is one bit of evidence from the Viking Age that might support the use of horned helmets is an image that appears on a tapestry found in the Osberg ship burial. The burial dates from the middle of the 9th century. The tapestry shows one figure wearing a horned helmet. Does this figure represent contemporary practices from the era when it was buried? Or does it represent a legendary figure from days gone by? There is no clear answer. Horned helmets are not complete a work of fiction. The evidence of these exists in Scandinavia during the Bronze and Early Iron Ages, well before the start of the Viking era. Bronze helmets found at Vixo in Denmark date from around the year 900 BCE, about 1500 years before the Viking Age. Horned helmets were probably used for ceremonial purposes. In a battle situation, horns on a helmet would get in the way. Such helmets would also have caused problems on board the warships where space was already limited. It was a German costume designer, Karl Emil Doppler, who included horned helmets in his designs for the 1876 performance of Wagner's classic, Norse Saga, The Ring the Nebulogon. The opera was so influential that Vikings with horned helmets became a new standard. Doppler's horned helmets were probably came from the stories of the ancient Greek and Roman chroniclers who described northern Europeans wearing helmets adorned with all manner of ornaments including horns, wings and antlers. The Woodstock Music Festival was held in New York from August 15 to 18 in 1969. Organizers expected about 50,000 people would attend the concert, but an estimated 1 million people descended on Woodstock. 32 musicians, a combination of local and world-famous talent, performed at Woodstock, amongst them Credence Clearwater Revival, an American rock band active in the late 60s and early 70s. Cadence was the first big-name band who signed up to perform at the festival. On the second day of the concert, Credence ended up with a lousy time slot about 1.30 am after Grateful Dead, another American rock band. On this, the Credence frontman John Fogarty said, Whoa, we got to follow the band that put half a million people to sleep. Music